It came with just one seat, one headlight, a single cylinder engine and three wheels. Representing economy motoring in its most basic, the Brutch Mopetta is one of the most bizarre and endearing cars ever made. Not that you can actually call it a car, because the Mopetta is really a scooter with an identity crisis, with its 49cc pull start engine and a three speed gearbox that lacks reverse gear. So what do you do when you need to turn it around? Simple. You just lift it up and move it by hand. Our stunt driver extraordinaire today is Rory Carter, whose father Andy has just finished restoring this Mopetta. So, Rory, what's the Mopetta like to drive? Uh, so with it being so small, it does tend to follow the road quite a little bit. Um, you've got to keep your hands on the handlebars to make sure it tracks correctly. Uh, just a single cylinder 49cc engine drives one of the rear wheels, um, about two and a half horsepower with a top speed of 28 miles an hour. Uh, but it does tend to pull a little bit under, under power and under acceleration. It's three forward gears um, which actually work quite well as a normal scooter and it's, it is geared well so you do use the gear uh, quite regularly. Um, it does vibrate a little bit um, and it's quite noisy but inside there is actually a surprising amount of space. Um, it's a bit more comfortable than it looks um, from the outside. I'd hope so because it looks really uncomfortable <laughs> from the outside. Perfect for the person with a death wish who was in no hurry, the ultra slow Mopetta was just 1.7 metres long and all of 88 centimetres wide. Still, with the prospect of reaching speeds that left you vulnerable to having pedal cyclists up your chuff, there was probably not that much damage that you could do to yourself. The Mopetta made its debut at the 1956 Frankfurt Motor Show and it was the brainchild of prolific microcar creator Egon Brutsch. The problem was that he had a habit of moving on to the next project before the last one was finished, so as a result he's responsible for a raft of other tiny selling vehicles, many of which have become every bit as collectible as the Mopetta. If you're wondering just how collectible the Mopetta is, the most original survivor of the few cars left was sold at auction in 2017 for £46,000. That's a lot of money for a car, and I use the term loosely, that's as unusable as they come. Even more bonkers is the fact that just two years later, the same Mopetta was sold for an even more eye-watering €69,000. Brutch allegedly designed and built the Mopetta in one day, which makes you wonder how he filled the afternoon. Intended to be amphibious, and I kid you not, the Mopetta was supposed to be propelled solely by its chain-driven left-hand rear wheel, although it failed on at least one count. Firstly, it couldn't float, which was quite a shortcoming for an amphibious car, and secondly, presumably, the engine would flood as it would be below the waterline. If the Mopetta lacked prowess on water, it was little better on the road. Indeed, so poor was the tiny single seater deemed to be in every way that the German authorities refused to allow Brutsch to sell the Mopetta in his home market. Undeterred, Brutsch tried to work with Opel to put the Mopetta into production, but those talks came to nothing, so his next step was to ship the cars that he'd already built to the UK to sell them there. But for some reason the Mopetta proved pretty much impossible to sell. Who could have foreseen that? After all, for your £200 you got a car that could accommodate a fully grown adult in reasonable comfort. Until the Mopetta started moving under its own limited power that is. There was even a see-through polyethylene roof which could be raised once the sole occupant was sitting inside. Before they could get out again though they'd have to fold the roof away as it enveloped the cabin. Once it was up, the ceiling was poor and headroom limited, so frankly you were better off just wearing a waterproof hat if you were going to drive in the rain, or leaving the Mopetta at home and walking or catching the bus. When the Motor magazine tested a Mopetta in 1957, there was no hint of criticism, despite the Mopetta's almost complete lack of practicality. Perhaps the reader was supposed to read between the lines by taking on board the various stats tables that spelled out such details as the Mopetta's sub-200-pound curb weight, its overall width of just three feet, and the fact that at a constant 10 miles an hour, it was capable of 124 miles per gallon. The Mopetta came with no warning lights, no instruments, and not even a steering wheel. Instead, there were handlebars with just a quarter of a turn between locks with a single 10-inch front wheel. There was no heater either, although it was noted that the engine gently warms the driver's left thigh. A hole provided for access to the sparking plug emits a stream of air which in winter can be used to warm up cold hands. So Mopetta drivers did get some luxury after all. The motor also noted that 
In the tail of the body is room for quite enough luggage for any tour which a mopetta driver is likely to undertake, which was presumably based on the assumption that no owner would go more than a few miles from home, with dirty weekends away being a complete non-starter, as there was space inside only for one. Another observation was that cold starts are best made standing alongside the mopetta, but once warmed up, an accidentally stalled engine can readily be restarted from the driving seat. Anyone who is allergic to string pulling, or who has overchoked the two-stroke engine, will find that accessibility of the controls from alongside the vehicle makes a push start in second gear fairly easy. But the mopetta's infallible magnetism for spectators in practice means that only in the most lonely of places need its owner ever actually push it himself. The reviewers also noted that the top speed on the level improved from barely 20 miles per hour to about 22 miles per hour during our test miles and would undoubtedly rise further towards the 27 miles per hour claimed by the German factory as the engine loosened up. Another observation was that cornering is excellent with the proviso that as the track is narrow and the engine's weight is on the left, an encounter with a projecting manhole cover when cornering very vigorously to the right can cause one rear wheel to lift and demand momentary but instant easing of the steering, until a three-point landing has been made. Bearing in mind all of the above, the motor didn't seem to have any hesitation in recommending the mopetta to its readers. The conclusion came that it can provide plenty of amusement, both by what it can do and by the reactions it produces from an astonished and faintly incredulous populace, but it also has real utility for short-distance journeys. A mopetta as we tested it has real usefulness, and we hope that later examples will be even better. Even better, eh? It's hard to see how such a winning formula could really be improved upon. Thought it was going to cut out as soon as you got out. <laughs> <laughs>